Do a barrel roll! Welcome to The Know, I'm Meg Turney. Here's what's going on in the world of video games. Hide your kids from VR, that's the official word from Sony regarding its virtual reality headset. Apparently, PSVR could be hazardous to kids. Who knew? This warning was quietly slipped into PlayStation 4 3.5 firmware update, which is currently in beta testing. Redditors in the beta snapped a screenshot of Sony's notice, stating that the headset is not for use by anyone under the age of 12. According to GamesRadar, this has to do with the distance between the center of a person's pupils or interpupillary distance. Kids having a small interpupillary distance will probably get all kinds of fucked up from using a VR headset for too long. Vomiting, being dizzy, headaches, that kind of thing. Then again, they said the same thing about the 3DS when it first came out and uh, nobody cared then either. So we'll just add PSVR to the list of things that are silently killing us all. Gears of War 4 probably won't be doing any silent killing when it launches later this fall. If you've been chomped at the bit for details about your favorite curb stomp and franchise, then Game Informers got you covered this month. The newest issue dishes out tons of info for the game, including the fact that co-op will be scaled back to two players once again. Considering the last game was serving a four-player co-op, downgrading to two doesn't really seem as mind-blowing as Microsoft has been describing the game lately, but eh, maybe that's just us. According to Game Informer, Gears of War 4 is also set 25 years after the events of the previous game and stars Marcus Phoenix's son as one of its three main characters. Sadly, neither of them is Coltrane or one of his kids. Missed opportunity, Microsoft. Amazon may be rectifying a missed opportunity of its own when it comes to international video game sales. They're now offering international shipping on both games and consoles. This import market game changer was discovered by Twitter user Hadler and then confirmed over at NeoGAF. This is a really small change by Amazon that's actually kind of a huge deal, which you'd know if you'd ever paid a ludicrous amount of money to have a game brought over from Japan. There are of course a couple of catches to ordering your next copy of Dead or Alive Beach Volley Boobs, which is what I'm calling it now. Shipping games from Japan only works on products sold directly by Amazon. Plus, you've got to sign up for an account on the Japanese version of the site. But hey, you can figure that out for tits, right? You'll do anything for tits. I know you so well. In case you thought Hollywood was done ransacking your childhood, nah, that's never gonna happen. Stop thinking that. Deadline is reporting that MGM is close to closing a deal for Where's Waldo the Movie, produced by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Yes, that's Seth Rogen and that Evan Goldberg, who also produced Superbad and Pineapple Express. Uh, this is the end as well, and also the interview. Yeah, they've done a lot together. One can only imagine how they'll adopt Where's Waldo, although it'll probably be like something like, hey guys, my Waldo is in the weed accessory shop buying a bong. I love Seth Rogen. MG acquired the film rights to the once hugely popular book series back in 2011, and I spent the last five years just kind of sitting on it, figuring out how the hell you make a Where's Waldo movie. Waldo wasn't anywhere as near of a hit as the Game of Thrones season six trailer was yesterday. Oh man, because Waldo didn't have boobies and this one did. According to HBO, the trailer for its latest season of its hit fantasy series was viewed more than 30 million times in its first 24 hours of posting. That's an all-time high for Game of Thrones trailers premieres, which is a thing we measure now, clearing the 27 million views received by last season's trailer. We won't get into too many spoilers here, and please don't get into spoilers in the comments, you jerks. Uh, the trailer does reveal a particularly important flashback from the books. You know, the whole Tower of Joy business, which may or may not confirm the R plus L equal J theories. I didn't read the books, so I don't understand that, Eddie. When you combine the fact that fans will be tuning in to find out the fate of a very important character, which you're all going to be talking about in the comments, plus the fact that book fans really have no idea what's coming next either, eh, you can only imagine what kind of records this actual season is going to break. The upcoming Assassin's Creed movie may already hold a different kind of record. The first movie with pre-order bonuses? Oh yeah. Ubisoft announced the video game-like pre-order bonuses for the film over on its blog today. I guess they figured gamers would put up with nonsense for video games, so hey, why not movies as well? The packages range from $15 up to $1,200. The lucky few who have enough disposable income to drop $1,200 on an Assassin's Creed movie ticket will also land a replica crossbow. So really you're just buying a crossbow and getting a ticket thrown in. 500 bucks will land you tickets to the movie and a Michael Fassbender statue. Yeah, I'm gonna do dirty things to that. There's also hoodies, t-shirts, all sorts of other stuff. One could only imagine what other video game models Ubisoft will try to apply to the film's release. More like season passes, maybe mid-movie microtransactions, maybe a day one launch issue. <sighs> 
We can only have, we'll have to wait, of course, until December to find out. Speaking of total disasters, this winter was officially the warmest one on record for the United States. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, it was about 5 degrees warmer than its 20th century average, which is a fairly big jump. Every state except for two in our great nation were warmer than normal, and even Alaska had its second warmest winter ever, at least since the NOAA started tracking all that stuff. While the current El Nino, the warm phase of the southern oscillation, is partly to blame for the shift in warmer temperatures, this is just a little bit alarming. I mean, to be fair to all you El Nino truthers out there, this year's record-breaking El Nino is hardly a little boy at all, ranking second to the strongest El Ninos ever. But even despite that, we've already seen winters are gradually warming across the United States each year in general. So yeah, you know what? With or without Ninos, we're screwed. Don't worry guys, something else will probably kill us long before global, global warming does, or global warming. It's all gonna kill us, like the 100-foot asteroid that barely missed Earth. NASA announced that asteroid 213TX68 passed Earth on Monday night. Now originally they predicted it would pass last week with a range anywhere between 15,000 and 3 million miles away, but instead it passed this week and they're still not sure just how close it got, which is not remotely comforting at all. Part of that disparity comes because they've only had a short time to track it since it was first spotted back in 2013. Now to be fair, a 100 foot asteroid certainly wouldn't endanger the entire planet. The asteroid that broke up over Russia three years ago that injured a thousand people and damaged buildings was about 65 feet wide. NASA said an asteroid of about 100 feet would likely produce an airburst with about twice the energy of that one. So guys, it's no big deal, right? Awful. Considering we can barely track a fiery death rock hurling towards our fragile little planet, it should be no surprise that some of our most expensive fighter jets are running into some strange glitches. The F-35, the most software-driven fighter developed, gave pilots a scare recently when it had a radar glitch that required them to turn it off and on. Yes, off and on was the troubleshooting solution for a ridiculously expensive fighter jet's radar. The warplanes have seen a number of other problems, including software bugs, weight issues, and being prone to lightning strikes. You know typical fighter jet problems. I already hate flying, never gonna get one of these. But the biggest issue that's concerning potential buyers uh, of these things is the fact that these software-driven fighter jets have yet to undergo any serious cybersecurity testing. Considering all the problems they've had so far, yeah, someone might wanna get on that. You know, somebody who's not a hacker on the internet. Or Angelina Jolie's boobs. A couple in China has been arrested for selling their 18-day-old baby in order to buy an iPhone because, of course, that's a headline nowadays. The couple sold the baby to a man who wanted to buy her for his sister. Nice birthday present, I guess. Then they purchased an iPhone and a motorbike with the money. When they were arrested for the transaction by Chinese police, they claimed they didn't know it was illegal to sell babies. Like, that's an excuse. Plus, they really wanted that iPhone. Come on. The father received a sentence of three years, while the mother received two and a half years suspended sentence because she's still in school, and school's important. As for the buyer, he freaked out when he heard what happened and turned himself in. Despite all this, the judge is allowing the buyer's sister to keep the baby, so I guess it's a happy ending? I don't know. And they didn't say what happened to the iPhone. That's what I wanted to know. That's the roundup for today, everyone. What do you guys think of all these stories? Tell us what you would do with a Michael Fassbender statue, Game of Thrones boobies. There's so much to talk about. Leave it all in the comments down below. And as always, for the latest in geeky news, like this video and subscribe to the now. Considering the last game was serving up to four player co-op, downgrading to two isn't really as mind blowing as Microsoft has been now let's go back to the string. Considering the last game was serving four player co-op, uh, downgrading to two really isn't just a, ugh, fuck. When you combine the fact that the fans will be returning in, uh, oh, I do get what he was saying there. Funny Eddie. The upcoming Assassin's Creed movie may be, uh, fuck. all the El Nino truthers out there. Uh, this is, this year's, the asteroid broke up over just a, what the hell is that? Some, oh, it broke up over restaurant. We're just gonna skip that city name for time. The F-35, the most software-driven fighter developed, gave pride off and on was the troubleshooting the warplanes have seen another of a- The F-35, the most software-driven fighter developed, gave pilots a fright recently when it had a radar glare- God damn it, this is tongue twister. 